I recently discovered push D, pop D, and the way they interact with the CD command. Now, presumably all of the super experienced Linux guys already know about these commands and how they work, but I figured that if I don't know about these commands, there's got to be some other people out there who have never heard of them either, and they actually have some really cool functionality. The way these commands operate is going to be tied to your shell. Whether you're using bash or zsh is going to determine some of the little pieces of functionality, nothing major. The general way it functions is going to be exactly the same. But when there is something different, I will be sure to mention it. When you perform a CD on a Unix-based system, it's not just going to be taking you into that directory. It's going to be going and modifying a few things as well. One of the things you probably know about is PWD. That is the current working directory. But another thing it's going to go and modify is the directory stack. So if we go and run ders-v, if we just run ders by itself, it's the exact same output, just not formatted as nicely. So ders-v is going to output that stack. Now, typically, it's not going to look that much like a stack. If I go and cd into my scripts directory and do the exact same command again, there's still only one element in the stack. But as you've seen here, it actually did modify the one element that was there. Maybe modify isn't the correct term. It would be more accurate to say that it took the directory off the stack, otherwise known as popping, and then add another directory onto the stack, otherwise known as pushing. Now, if you've never come across a computer science stack before, Basically, it works the same way as a physical stack. So let's say we go and push a book onto the stack, and then push another book onto the stack, and then another one. So if you want to take something off the stack, usually with a stack, you can only take it from the top. If you can take it from anywhere else, it's more accurate to say that it's a list. So let's go and take the top one off, and then one more off, and now we only have one element left in the stack. This order of taking elements out of the data structure is known as last in, first out. But that's enough of Computer Science 101, let's get back to the main topic. The directory stack, for the most part, does operate like a stack, where you put things on and you take things off. But there are some weird things about it that do make it more list-like in some ways, but I'll get into those in just a bit. At this point, the names pushd and popd should start making a bit of sense. So pushd is going to push a directory onto the stack, whereas popd is going to pop that directory off. But what does that actually mean in practice? Let's go and push d into a directory. Let's say we go back to my scripts directory. So it's going to go and cds into that, but you might notice it also outputted the directory stack. So let's do a ders-v again, and we'll notice there's actually two elements on here now. The first element being my current directory, my scripts directory, and then the second element being my home directory. And this will keep going every single time we run push D. So let's go and push D into my pictures directory, and then go and push D into my videos directory, and run ders-v again, and we'll see the stack is now considerably larger. So what would happen then if we ran push D on the current directory? Well, we can go and find out by just passing in push D and dot. Now, as you can see, it operates as if it's just any other regular directory. Now we actually have two instances of the exact same directory on the stack. If you run push D, as if it is CD, it effectively gives you a CD history. It doesn't matter how many times you revisit the exact same directories, I could just keep going and doing push D dot and just keep running that over and over and over again, and it's just going to keep adding those as new entries into my stack. Ders also has another command, that is ders-c. That is going to go and clear the directory stack, so if we do a ders-v now, it's going to be completely empty. The reason why I did that is I want to show you what happens if you run push D without an argument. So let's go and actually CD into videos. That's a good spot to be in. And then we go and do a push D and let's go into my scripts directory. At this point, we have two elements in the stack. So you might expect it to operate the same way that CD does and take us back to our home directory. It's not actually going to do that though. What it's actually going to do is basically swap around the first and the second elements. And it doesn't matter how many things are actually in the stack, it's always going to swap those elements. Technically, there isn't behavior that the stack should have, but you can get the stack to emulate that behavior 
basically by popping both the elements off the stack and then pushing them back on, but in the opposite order. Basically running push D like this is a shortcut for doing that. Now pop D should be fairly easy to understand. What it's going to do is pop a directory off the stack. And from what we've seen before, we know that whatever the directory at the top of the stack is, is always going to be our current directory. So if we go and do a pop D, what it's going to do is take us to the next directory in the stack. And unlike when we're swapping the directories around, if we go and run a ders v as we can see, now we just have one element left in the stack. Currently our directory stack looks like this. And so far I've only been working with cd, push d, and pop d. But we don't just have to use the directory stack with these commands. There's actually a way we can access these directories from other applications, let's say ls for example, and the way we can do this is with a shorthand numbered argument. This is the main reason why I say it operates kind of like a stack. Normally when you're operating on a stack, you only operate on the top element and nothing else. But technically, if you unload the stack and reload the stack, you can get at the other elements. It's just usually not the most optimal thing to be doing. So if we want to go and pass in, let's say, the pictures directory into ls. What we can do is tilde and then the index of the thing we want to access. So in this case, tilde 1 and it will go and ls that out. Now, when you use a command that doesn't actually take you into a new directory, it doesn't actually modify the directory stack. So I can effectively treat these as a block of aliases that I've created on the fly. I can go and run uh, ls on 2 and then ls on 3, and it's not actually going to go and change anything with the stack. It's going to stay exactly the same. You can use a command like cd and then go directly into, say, element 1. That will work perfectly fine. But doing so obviously is going to actually modify the stack. However, it only modifies the first element, the current directory that you're in. So all of the other elements are exactly the same. Effectively, it still does operate like an alias. You just can't use the current directory as one of the elements. There is another numbered argument we can use, but this is only for push D, pop D, and CD. For this one, we replace the tilde with a plus or a minus. So for this one, effectively what we're doing is taking a step in a certain direction. So if we do say plus one, that is basically the same as saying index one. But if you do minus one, it's going to start at zero and then go one step backwards, taking you to the end of the stack. Say, for example, we wanted to go and do a pop D on plus one to get rid of that extra pictures. And now we can see it's actually missing from the stack. Now, one interesting thing about doing it like this is it's not actually going to go and take you into that directory. It's just a way to remove certain elements from the stack. Now, in the case of push D, unless I'm missing something, we're not actually able to go do, say, push D plus one and then pass in a path or in the other direction to pass that part, to pass that direction to put that directory into a certain spot in the stack. But if we go and do a push D on say element one, it is going to let us swap those elements around. The main difference between bash and ZSH is that ZSH actually is an option to make it so CD effectively operates like push D does by automatically pushing elements onto the stack. This effectively gives you that CD history and allows you to use the indexes on any of the programs you want to use. What we need to do is go set a value inside of our ZSHRC. So what you're going to want to set is this value right here. Set opt auto underscore push D. And then once you've gone and restarted your shell, if you're just doing stuff in a terminal, restarting your terminal is going to do that fine. If we go and CD into a new directory, let's say into scripts, if I then go and do a ders-v, rather than just having one element in the stack, it now has two. However, with a shell function, you can very easily emulate this behavior over in bash anyway. This is obviously old news. This functionality has been available since before I was born, but I have never heard anyone talk about this, whether that be on forums or in videos, and I had just never come across it before. The only reason I knew this existed is because a random GitHub project I was looking at briefly mentioned it and I was like what is that and now we have a video if you learned something today or you think what I said was a massive waste of time please do let me know in the comment section down below that'll be everything for me and before I go I would like to thank my supporters so a special thank you to
Joachim, Donald, Logan, Michael, Andre Mitchell, Nathan, David, Carl, Will, Brennan, Chica Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Josh, Michael, Petey, Stephen, T, Return to Shah, and all of my two dollar supporters. If you like to go and support, if you like to go and support my work, there will be links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, start, leave a pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel where I live stream twice a week and I also upload shorts. And this channel is available over on Odyssey. That was a train wreck ending. Uh, I'm going to go now. Bye. Where's the button? <laughs>